What's going on everybody? Welcome back. I'm excited to get back to the series. So again, I'm trying to make everybody happy. These are going to be longer posts, more lecture style. I'm going to try to make it as short as possible without rushing it. And then after this series, I'm going to chop these up into little pearls, little tidbits and make them reels. And then you can have this to go back to as a reference because I understand not everybody wants to watch an eight minute video of me talking. So bear with me if you want the quick stuff i'll be back to that at no point it was fun doing that and i will get back to that style so my objective for this first post is two things what is knee, medial knee pain and how is it different than it band friction syndrome in runner's knee or anterior knee pain and what causes it why do we get it so another thing that you probably noticed that i'm going to try to do is incorporate you guys more more engagement i don't like just talking myself up here i want to engage with you guys i want you guys to learn from this that's how i'm driven so i'm going to keep including in my story quizzes and questions and incorporating these into the post. So if you haven't already, make sure you check out my stories and you can vote on these and that way you're a part of this. So that's how this series was picked by you guys voting. So the question was, which of the following is not caused by impact? Impact being, I've said it a million times, I'm gonna say it at least another million times. Every time you land, every action, equal and opposite reaction. My body weight, up to 2.5 times my body weight, is gonna come right back up at me when I land. So let's say I weigh 100 pounds. I don't, I know the camera is kind of slimming, but I don't. I'm taking up to 250 pounds of stress. So where that goes, most common injuries are at the knee. So we gotta make sure, can we divvy up this force? So that was a quick tangent. If you'll notice, IT band friction, friction syndrome, is not necessarily load or impact dependent. So you'll see I've got another series on that, go over that a little bit more, so that's more friction based. A lot of you guys got that right. So to tackle the first objective, what's the differences of the knee pain? Different parts of our body have different lists of what can cause pain. So let's say you come in the clinic, you say, Matt, I've got knee pain. There's this list of all these things that can cause knee pain. So then what I do is I try to ask, what's the location? That location can help, especially with the knee. This isn't true for every part of the body. That location can help me to lean out that list. Anterior knee pain has a certain list or a differential diagnosis of things that can cause pain outside of the knee, different list, and so on. So typically with this, just by asking the main location of your pain, that can help us differentiate what is the cause. So if the pain is in the front of your knee, that's runner's knee, or the fancy term is patellofemoral pain syndrome, it has to do with excessive loading on the back of the kneecap. And if the pain is on the outside of your knee, just down below the joint line, that's called IT band friction syndrome, most commonly IT band friction syndrome. So if your location is in the front of your knee or on the outside, that alone can kind of help us to weed you off of this list, this medial knee pain. I've already done two series, one on each of those before, an entire series on runner's knee and an entire series on IT band friction syndrome. So if you're looking for more information on that, go ahead and check those out. Got tons of content on there for you guys that hopefully you'll find helpful. So for the second objective, why do we get it? What causes it? Why is it on the inside of my knee? I want to explain to you is as simple as, let's say I always bang my head on that wall right there. Same spot, I'm always slamming it against the wall. Why do I have head pain? Why do I have a headache? Why is it always hurt there? Because that's where I'm slamming my head against the wall. Medial knee pain is because when we land, that's where the force goes. It loads the inside compartment, which I'll talk about, of your knee. So let's watch this again in slow motion. Boom. Every action, like I talked about before, equal and opposite. That force, that's representing up to two and a half times my body weight, that's coming right back up at me. Where does it go? Where's the direction? Towards your center of mass, which is just in the front of S2 of your spine. Your spine. So it always goes towards that direction. Everything along this limb as I land, this force, is gonna create a different type of stress on it. Depends on the joint, what type of joint it is. And so what that's gonna do is if we look, this is an axis of the knee joint. If I were to take a rod and go straight through the center of my knee, it's not gonna feel good, that would move in this plane. Well, guess what? Our knee doesn't move in that plane. Our knee moves mainly on this, what we call medial lateral axis, where it bends and straightens. So this doesn't have to do with that. This has to do with going front to back of these forces side to side, which are where most, most injuries coupled with rotation occur. But what this is going to do is the distance from there to here, this is called a moment. This creates what's called an adduction moment. And I'll explain what that is. 
So if you imagine I've got two bones, top bone, bottom bone, that force as it comes up is gonna push that way. The joint, if we're looking at that axis, what's that gonna do? As I push this way, what's that gonna do? It's gonna load the inside part of my knee. So another diagram of that to represent that, top bone, bottom bone, femur, tibia, those come together. But with this, as I'm pushing, this is a right leg, this way, from that ground reaction force, that varus moment, what's that gonna do? It's going to load the inside of the knee. So every time you land, two and a half times your body weight, it's going up and causing that compressive force there. Compression here, gapping or tense, tension over there. So that's another key point that we'll talk about later. So why is this important? I want you to know the mechanism of what loads the inside of your knee because that's just the beginning. Why is the inside of your knee being loaded? That's where we look at, are you overstriding? That can amplify this. Are you doing too much of this up and down, this vertical displacement? Again, can amplify the effects of this. Are you towing in? Are you towing out? There's so many different variables that can cause too much too soon. You stress your body, you recover. Stress, recover. Too much stress, not enough recovery, those gaps, that's where we get these overuse or under recovery. So this is just the very beginning, the very basics. I'm gonna use this as a di diagram later on, an analogy of why we're loading the inside of the knee and that will make sense as it goes on. Hopefully that made sense. Please drop some questions down below. Let's make this interactive. Don't let me just talk to myself up here. Next post is a good one. It's a hot topic to run or not to run. And if you do, how do we know when it's time to run? So that's a really important one. People wanna know, doctor said six weeks, I can't run. Well, why six weeks? Can we make that four weeks? Can we make that two weeks? Do you not have to shut it down at all? So that's what I got planned for you guys next. I hope you guys enjoyed and I look forward to this series with you guys.